Hi, this is your Sabdul Bharti and we are here at CubeCon in Cloudy Con in Salt Lake City, Utah. And today we have with us Raghu Vati, field CTO and VP of strategy at Zadeda. Raghu, it's great to have you on the show. Oh, great for having me. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Of course, we have been covering Zadeda on a regular basis, but since you are here, so define Zadeda for viewers. So when we started Zadeda um, around uh, eight years ago, what we wanted to do was enable edge computing. And that means a very wide thing, right? What uh, edge computing for us, uh, because we are coming from that DNA, working in very large uh, companies that dealt with the large scale at the edge, we knew that like there is an application stack that needs to be uh, ready for edge. There is the data that needs to be ready for edge. And there needs to be an orchestration plane that is ready for edge. Our DNA just got us into the orchestration plane and we wanted to build the orchestration plane uh, not only because like we are good at it, but we immediately recognize that like that is where most of the manual work with that will be done at the edge. And that means that if we reduce the cost of operating uh, that plane, then we can make uh, edge that much more viable commercially. And once edge becomes commercially viable, we know that like we are going to have a lot of uh, uh, expansion in terms of the kind of applications that would be developed at the, for the edge. So that is where we started. But what I would like to tell to people when they are just asking me, hey, give me an elevator pitch of what Zadida is, right? You are running things in the cloud. You are running things in data centers. Now, if you want to take that same technology, same uh, way of thinking and want to bring it to the edge, you can do that with Zadida Cell. What we are doing is we are collapsing that layer and almost making it transparent for you so that you can just concentrate on your applications that you have developed either in the cloud or data center or you are going to develop just like you are developing them for these infrastructures. How would you define edge today? Because edge means different thing for different people. How would you define edge? And of course, we are here at KubeCon. So what does your definition of edge fit into the Kubernetes ecosystem? Oh, definitely. So, like I said, when we started, we wanted to like make the edge management and orchestration as viable as possible, right? And get it to a point where we just, people don't think about it. But what they were thinking about a few years ago was things like, how do I take my legacy system, bring it into the an edge infrastructure, and slowly peel away things to modernize it, make it microservices based, make it container based, so that now this legacy system that used to give some value at a different place can provide that same value in the edge. And they want to, at the end of the day, provide solutions that people can touch and feel, right? Now, that has not changed. What changed is the people's belief. What I have seen is over this past few years, uh, people have started believing that they can actually do full-fledged container orchestration at the system. What it means is not just about containers or VMs or things like that. They can take all the things that they have invested in cloud and data center over the past 10 years, take that knowledge, take that IP, but also all the resources, and then directly translate that onto the edge. And that is where people's belief has changed. So now you see a lot more use cases being positioned at the edge. People believe that like they can now take uh, things like uh, AI, uh, for example, okay? A and uh, think very sophisticated applications that can provide you real-time analysis and real-time feedback. Those are the things that changed. And again, like you said, we are at Kub uh, KubeCon, so we have to talk about Kubernetes, but we are actually living Kubernetes uh, on a daily basis. And the reason is, when they first started, people would think about one or two or three different containers running besides a virtual machine somewhere, right? Now, as they are successfully like peeling away the layers or adding more microservices to provide that solution at the edge, what is happening is they start thinking about, okay, how do I really manage it now, right? People want to have that orchestration system that can actually manage their applications that they are running. And all of a sudden they are like, oh, I know how to manage uh, containers. I've been doing Kubernetes ever since in uh, the cloud and uh, on data centers. I'll just use Kubernetes and all of a sudden, then okay, this is not the same beast. 
okay running kubernetes somewhere is not the same as running kubernetes at the edge and but they want to future proof themselves and they have invested in kubernetes in other places and they want to reuse that and that is where people are coming in and saying i want to use kubernetes at the edge to manage my workloads that otherwise are become unmanageable right uh, and we can talk more about kubernetes uh, too in terms of like what are the differences why does it make it a different beast all of those things yeah and that actually a very perfect segue because when we look at kubernetes whole cloud native system uh, the landscape is massive tons of products and we continue to talk about complexity we talk about cost we talk about scalability so can you also talk about what kind of challenges enterprise customers face in zdata's you know ecosystem and how do you folks help them address these challenges so uh, great question thank you uh, so whenever i think about like large problems right i i like to think about in terms of what does it mean to actually do this and when i say what does it mean there are three things one is it commercially viable second is it actually viable at all do i have resources to do that okay and the third thing is what is the value that it is going to provide so one big difference between kubernetes elsewhere and kubernetes at the edge is kubernetes at the edge at least today and i foresee it that to be the constant for the next few years is simple what is different is the scale is different and i'm not talking about large clusters but i'm talking about huge number of clusters so for example one of our customer uh, we have currently deployed around 15000 endpoints for these customers and each endpoint is a single node kubernetes cluster so they are now dealing with how do i manage 15000 kubernetes clusters which is not the problem that any of the other people who are running in uh, cloud or in the data centers have to worry about because it's a highly centralized one they have they are all worried about how do i scale my cluster do i need 10 clusters or can i just compress them into two because i need two clusters kind of a thing right those are the problems that they are thinking about but in the edge the scale is completely different that is the first one the second thing that uh, also goes back to the commercial viability is how do i manage it if i need a person at least i mean if if not one to one even for 100 of these sites if i need one person to manage that kubernetes clusters 100 clusters which is common in it world elsewhere then we are talking about hundreds and thousands of people just to manage your infrastructure and that is not commercially viable so that is another problem security becomes a very big problem when it is so dispersed and then how do you see the how do i monitor this how do i actually know the health of my assets and how do i know the health of the asset that my kubernetes is hosted on when you deploy a kubernetes cluster in like for example on aws right you don't you never question hey what is running my kubernetes cluster you are only worried about your kubernetes cluster that's it right so we want to get to that level and it is not there yet and that is those are the kind of problems that our customers face while going through that viability process and most of the time they do not actually have people even if they are willing to pay they cannot find people to like actually go to that site if it is in the middle of the ocean or if it is in the middle of midland texas which is a lot of oil but no people right okay so those are the kind of things that like we want to solve so remote access remote management remote orchestration become very very important so that is the first one then you have to add policies on top of it how do i manage my runtime how do i manage my applications on top of it and not only that but like you are now talking to these people in terms of pets and cats right if you have a pet you are going to name the pet exactly know what the, the pet is going to like to eat and everything but if you have a bunch of cattle you can't do that what you do is you brand them segregate them into different fleets and then you say i'm going to vaccinate all of this cattle today and the next day i'm going to do something so you need to have that policy engine to be able to do that not in the kubernetes sense but the stack sense and those are the kind of things that we provide everything from monitoring to uh, upgrades and updates of the runtime to the security of the whole stack but most importantly people want to be able to run this on a diverse environments different types of hardware but also be able to have a different workload that would be running besides the runtime that's a very common thing that we see right and lastly uh, 
you have to talk about connectivity to these clusters because in a cloud, all these clusters are connected properly and if the cloud goes down for like a minute, it's a big deal. But at the edge, nothing is guaranteed, right? Like, okay, if it is raining, you might not have connectivity to your cluster. How do you manage it? How do you manage the fact that like you are in an air-gapped environment or an unpredictable connectivity environment? And you have to be able to templatize it and like policy, put policy around it to manage these large fleets. So these are all the kind of problems that we deal with at the edge and like uh, again there are a lot of other things too but these are i would say like the bigger ones and we provide solutions for this to do this like we actually announced uh, zks zedita kubernetes service last year at kubecon and we have made tremendous progress since then we now have i would say one of the largest if not the largest uh, clusters or the fleet of clusters in the world our fleet of clusters uh, kubernetes clusters just for one customer is uh, almost 15,000 clusters, and they're threatening to go to 70,000. Okay, so we are we want to be a few steps ahead so that we can give our customers a good experience, but there are a lot of other customers who are in that same place, uh, on that same journey, and they are getting into thousands and soon into 10,000. So you need a solution for this. When we look at the adoption, growth of AI or Gen AI, how are you seeing Gen AI or AI at the edge? What unique challenges it poses versus, as you said, you know, it's not just remote, uh, a remote server on the top of a mountain. It could be a submarine or a, ve a vehicle in the ocean, which will not even see any land for the next six months. So uh, talk about AI challenges in that space and we're saying how Zedida is addressing some of those challenges. So. Gen AI and just the advent of chat GPT, I should say, okay? What it did is that it captured the imagination of the people, mostly the architects at the edge. So these are the guys who are thinking about like solutions that they are going to bring to market a few years down the lane. And now, all of a sudden they are like, okay, if I can do that in the cloud, if I can just go and tell like, okay, give me the, write a two page essay about something, if I can do something like that in the cloud, why can't I make more sense about the sensor data that I'm collecting at the edge? It shouldn't be that hard. So that is, in my mind, the biggest thing that happened, okay? What followed that is very, very natural. So the first phase was, uh, I would say, the last past two years is people coming in to labs and trying to figure out if they can actually derive value out of the data that they already own. Okay, that's the first one. Then they are going into the thing of, okay, I did this, but now I have to deploy this in 20,000 uh, lines uh, on a plant or 20,000 endpoints in a plant or 10,000 endpoints in a plant. How do I do that? Then they are also thinking about, okay, this is not just about managing the infrastructure that runs my AI application, but I also have to now manage the models because models have to change from site to site. Okay, right? So now, how do I do that? How do I gather the performance of the model, not the performance of the infrastructure? How do I gather the performance of the model? And these are all the new problems that they are thinking about. And Kubernetes is helping them to like bring all of this together as a platform, but they are now in the process of establishing those entities and making sure that they can coexist together. In what I deal with, is like I see a lot of AI-based uh, projects that are kicked off in the past one year uh, and they have gone past the labs and they are slowly getting into the hands of the operators and in that after the lab and in between the between before they get into the operators is when they are thinking how do I orchestrate this how do I really manage it okay because now all the edge problems are coming back to those guys right they are not thinking they were not thinking about the edge issues but now when you run this at the edge first of all you have to miniaturize it a little bit so how do i pass my gpus to the application do i run it on gpu or do i run it on the cpus and even otherwise like if i have a fleet of 15 uh, thousands of these endpoints or even hundreds of these endpoints how do i actually manage it uh, at scale how do i do ml ops or ai ops how do i get the feedback back these are all the problems that they are seeing. And uh, thankfully, like Zedida has invested quite a bit in the stack below this. 
and uh, we were a step ahead and like we invested in uh, all the other things that they need and we are enabling our customers today both through partnerships some of it built in house uh, but we are ready and we are actually enabling some of our partners go through that journey themselves but i would say we are also at a very instant uh, infant stage of this journey we are at the stage where like people are taking it to market taking it out into the field gathering the learnings and feeding those learnings back into the system uh, not just in terms of the data but also in terms of the process uh, and i'm quite excited about that side because uh, if there was a killer app that everyone understands ai at the edge would be one of those things right everything from vision based to physics based everything else and the verticals that we are operating in uh, these are this comes very natural i mean we work in this space so we assume that hey everybody is on kubernetes journey everybody is on modern but there are still a lot of companies who are still you can call them traditional or legacy environment or legacy applications and they are looking at moving digitization or to kubernetes to cloud native now when they do look at it they also see you know pros and cons you know uh, what are the risks associated what are the threats associated to move from legacy system to this modern system and is the data in any way help them with this migration no oh, that's again another great question actually like one of the things that i tell people is like zedida is in the edge orchestration and management business but parallelly we are in the risk mitigation business okay so what it means what i mean is like when uh, when you have a legacy system that is uh, your cash cow that is the revenue generating thing for you and you are now tasked with modernizing that either you have to like go build a parallel system which is all based out of modern technologies cutting edge everything from kubernetes to ai and everything else then install it parallelly and then like look at its performance and then like swap it right that no one can do at the edge because we are now talking about 20000 or 30000 thousands of endpoints so what the architects of these things uh, asked us and this was in the infancy of our own journey as zedida is give us a path where i can go have my legacy system and start peeling off layers of it modernizing it again creating containers out of it uh, uh, and then like running it side by side uh, of a virtual machine and they are on that journey they do that and at some point they have enough of these containers that they think okay not only do i need uh, to run these containers natively but i also need a container orchestration system that is where kubernetes comes into picture and like all the management of the kubernetes comes into picture right so those are the kind of things that actually provide a lot of value to them where they can go on that risk mitigation uh, on that journey where they don't have to risk their revenues they can give a guaranteed outcome because any time they you go down a path you don't have to close the doors on the other path you can always come back okay i made a mistake i can iterate back right so those are the kind of things that zedida provides and that is the reason we started out with a platform that can run both virtual machines containers and container run times side by side on very small footprint devices and that is not a small feat i mean i can sit here and say like oh these are the easy things to do but that is a a miracle in itself to be able to run it on a raspberry pi for example okay or like smaller footprints uh, devices or a small cluster of devices so that is what we wanted to do those are the bigger technological challenges that we solved and once we solved that then everything else followed naturally for us and i i do think that is one of the greatest uh, uh, or the best decisions we have made uh, both to enable our customers but also as a company we added a lot of value to ourselves by going down that architectural path ragu thank you so much for joining me today and of course a great insights of course edge zadida and kubernetes you said how you folks are actually solving the problems not only just people who are all, all, you know as you said you know for 15000 to 70000 but also those who are on the legacy systems as well so thanks for great insight and i would love to have you back on the show thank you oh thanks for the opportunity eh, to spread the word about edge to everyone okay thanks again